Hello my friends, this is now my 10th video. I do a variety of videos. This particular one would appeal more to my followers who enjoy Latin American literature. And this is really a very hard video to do because, well, I've done a couple novels from Latin American literature. I've done one essay. This is a short story, but this is not really a very happy, pretty story. And the life of the, the man who wrote the story, he did not have a happy life either. And probably no surprise because a lot of what authors write are, are autobiographical. So that would make sense. But this is a short story by an Uruguayan author who I believe spent most of his life in Argentina, Horacio Quiroga. Horacio kind of Horace in English. And the name of the short story that he published back in 1909 was called La Gallina de Goyada. I would translate that as the beheaded hen, but I did see an English translation of this short story a few days ago where the translator uh, gave the name as the decapitated chicken. I guess either title, you know, gives the point, but I, I think I like mine a little bit better because the gallina is really a hen rather than just a straight chicken. So even though this is not an uplifting, happy story, I just thought it was so well written. And I happen to like Alfred Hitchcock, some of his movies and his TV shows, and I like Edgar Allan Poe too. So this really was a horror story and parts of it are really quite gruesome. But I guess I also like to be scared once in a while. <laughs> but as I say, it's a hard video to do because it's not an uplifting story. So why don't I just launch first into the plot and then we can talk a little bit about Horacio Quiroga, about how maybe his life paralleled at least a little bit the pain and the sorrow of the story. So the story starts off and it's kind of creepy even from the beginning. <laughs> there is this couple, when they got married, the wife was 22, the husband was 28, and like many young couples, they really wanted to have that great family story. So they started off with four sons and eventually they had a fifth child, a daughter. And this was five children in four confinements because Two of the sons were born as twins. So as I recall, for each son that was born, they were healthy and, you know, looked beautiful at the beginning. But with each son, something went wrong. The same thing actually went wrong each time. It's been a while since I've read it, so I forget exactly what happened. I seem to remember there were convulsions, and I don't remember what brought them about. but. Every single time for all four son of those all four of those sons, including the twins, they became profoundly mentally challenged after that happened. And Horacio Quiroga from the very beginning refers to them as the four idiots that sat in front of the house all day. But I think back in 1909, idiot may have been an acceptable acceptable medical term in the field of mental health. I know even in the last few decades, mental health terms, what's acceptable and what has not, has evolved. There are things that we said 30 years ago that we're not supposed to say now. So yes, idiot is a very disparaging term, a very nasty, unkind term, but perhaps back in 1909, that was acceptable. And Kiroga does refer to the four sons throughout this short story as idiots, but as I say, it may not, he may not have meant to be quite as disparaging as it comes across. But yeah, it's very, very creepy, even before we get the, to the part that's really scary in this short story. They just sit there out front all day long, they don't have anything else to do, and in this short story, many days it was hot, and he just talks about how when the sun started to go down and it cooled, about how they kind of raged and laughed and were just so happy that it was going to be cooler. He, he, he makes it not just creepy, but I guess kind of scary. And uh, he even mentions that sometimes 
the son's mood. And from what I read about his life, he never had any children that were mentally handicapped or, handicapped or suffered like these children did. So that part is an autobiographical. Anyway, eventually the husband and wife couple, I mean, eventually, they, I, I believe they were kind of fried at one point and just burned out and, you know, they were ready to just give up. But they finally did, after the passage of a few years, I believe it was maybe four years, they decided to try again. And by the way, from what I remember, the four sons were between the ages of eight, that would be the twins who were born last, and I think 12 or 13, maybe 14, something like that. So they have a little girl, and the mother's name was Berta. And they named the daughter Bertita, which would mean like little Berta or sweet Berta. And Berta, well, Bertita turned out to be completely normal. And, you know, was an adorable child. And I believe by the time what happened happened in this story, she was about three or four years old. But it's just really very shocking. As I said, this is kind of a very hard video for me to do because it's not totally uplifting. But as I mentioned, I like Hitchcock, I like Poe, and even if something is not pleasant, if somebody just is a great writer, well, I can forgive that sometimes. And beyond that, you know, if you really wanna know Latin American literature, I think you need a smattering of everything, and you need to read some stuff, even if it wouldn't be your first choice, if it's a classic. So the four sons, and I believe they lived on a farm because periodically they slaughtered chickens. And the four sons sat there. I, I, don't, I don't know if they saw it a whole lot of times or just this one time. It really made an impression on them when the family was decapitating a chicken for a meal it may have, it must have, this, this one time uh, really made an impression on them. And I think they were hungry at the time when they saw that happen. But towards the very end of the story, the beloved Bertita, she wanders out by herself, very, very vulnerable. I mean, she left the house only for a little bit away from her parents. And her parents would have had no way of knowing that they would need to guard her quite this carefully that they couldn't leave her alone for a second uh, around her brothers. But I believe the, uh, the beheading of that particular chicken that just happened really recently or recently enough that it was fresh in their memories. So when she came out, she was vulnerable. For whatever reason, when they saw her, they kind of made the correlation between the chicken and their sister. And Horacio Quiroga, thank goodness he doesn't go into too much detail, but he does mention that they grabbed her. He mentions enough, you know, that what's not mentioned is probably worse. <laughs> you know how it is. Sometimes what you don't say makes it just as difficult, if not more. And I think she cried out for a little bit, but it just happened so quickly that there wasn't a lot of noise. And the parents, I think, they both called out to her. They heard her at first, and then they didn't hear her. And then they really became alarmed. And then the father ran out, and the father saw what had happened. And I'm going to kind of spare you at least a little bit of detail, even though he didn't go into that much. I'll just say that the father told the mother not to come out. Now, if all that wasn't enough... <laughs> As I keep saying, this is a very difficult one to do. A wedge was kind of, a wedge kind of grew between the husband and the wife with all the tension that went on because of this. And that's the sad part in itself. You know, you would think after all the husband and wife had been through and their love for their sons and their hope to really have a family at one point, I would almost hope that would bring them closer together but it didn't. There was resentment, probably more resentment on the part of the father than on the mother. 
And in this story, he actually refers to his wife a couple times as a snake. Now, that's how I would translate it. The English translation that I saw a few days ago that I told you about, the translator said that he called her a viper. And I just don't think that's very accurate for the United States of America. Uh, when we talk disparagingly about someone we don't like or we think is evil, we really just call them a snake. So if I had done this translation, I would have said that, not a viper. So yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of sad that with everything else that happened that there were these violent arguments and that kind of vitriol. But truly, Horacio Quiroga, he was a very intelligent man. He was a very gifted man, and he was, he was well-versed in a wide variety of areas. Just very smart. He may have even been a genius and a great story writer. But he had very stormy relationships with most of the women in his life. He was married at least twice. His first wife, he had a very volatile temper and it was very unpleasant for her. And eventually she took poison and tried to kill herself. And unfortunately, I mean, it's bad enough that that happened, but unfortunately it took eight days before she passed away and she was in great pain. And at that time, I believe Horacio Quiroga was only about 30, 31, and he had two young children. I think one was four, one was five, and that was a very hard, hard time for both of them. It was difficult, but for all of them, uh, Quiroga and his two children, it was just awful. And there were just so many things. It's sad to say, but I think that Horacio Quiroga not only had a sad life, but a pathetic life. I don't know that I want to say anything more about the difficulties in his life. <laughs> I don't want to bring you down too much beyond what I already have, but I guess that's about it for now. Um, as I keep saying, it was very well written. And if you're like me, as I mentioned also, if you like Alfred Hitchcock, if you like Edgar Allan Poe, well, maybe you'd like this one. So thanks for listening and, you know, thanks for abiding, abiding with me in what was not an easy topic to talk about this time. Bye.